Hi guys, welcome back. As promised, I bring you my university degree booklet that was from my final year at University of Gloucestershire in 2018. Now this booklet contains quite a lot of artists that were featured within the year. I also have to, well I'm not even going to apologise for my dirty desk because it's just what it is. <laughs> so we're just going to scratch over that and basically say I know my desk is a mess but that's just what it is like all the time. <laughs> But what I wanted to talk to you today and to go through with you is this booklet because it was the curation of a exhibition that was called Evolve. Now this one has seen better days. You can definitely see what colour it used to be compared to what the colour is now. I do have a more pristine version downstairs but this one is just for the studio because I like to flip for it just for some inspiration and just to remind me of how much the things have changed. Saying that, I haven't looked at it for the last two years at least. Um, well, graduating since 2018, so that's about five years this year, was when everything changed and I came out of education for the first time and I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> so going out into the big adult world was not the greatest idea in the world that I would like to have done but you know what I've survived this far we'll see how the rest of it goes so without further ado I'm just going to start it so here we have an arrangement of people that were in our artists exhibition in that year so we have a couple of Speeches from two of our lecturers. So we've got Bob Davison. He was uh, one of the fine arts uh, lecturers who was there for the whole three years because we did have a couple lecturers move about and leave, but that's absolutely fine. But I'll just read you out what he just said. He said, "Well, another batch done, but it's much more than that. This group were particularly strong. They worked hard and enthusiastically, both individually and as a gang. They engaged with my teaching and and wit." I'm guessing that's a spelling typo, what an awkward time to get it wrong. With patience and good humour, and they returned it in spades. It has been fun. As an exhibition will attest, they have been hugely successful already and will continue to be so. I look forward to hearing from them all, all of their endeavours. I congratulate them and wish them all the best of luck and all that they do in the future. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> if you're watching this, I highly doubt that you are, but you never know. And Stuart Geddes, who was... I think we met him in the third year because he was originally from the University of Bristol. So just read quickly read his speech. The speculative nature of undergraduate fine art teaching in which the normal hierarchy of authority leading a student doesn't really occur continues to fascinate fascinate me. It is a discourse process whose purpose is to tease out a personal vision, a process through which this teacher learns too. I'd like to thank this year graduating fine art students for the journey we've been on together and what you've taught me. You can go forward into a demanding contemporary world with confidence and excitement about what you're about to experience and contribute. Oh, we got Richard. <laughs> Richard was our fine art history teacher. I liked learning about fine art, I just didn't like writing about it. My dissertation was the, the worst thing I had ever experienced in terms of writing. I did it, I passed. I was very happy with it. It was probably the best I was ever going to get, but it's done now. Thank Lord. So, of course, he starts off with a statement. Art, huh? What is it good for you? Good for? Absolutely. No, not nothing. Obviously, that's war. Art is, well, actually, it is quite difficult to say what art is good for. We are we have debated it over in the last three years. Me and this year's graduating artists, there have been some lively discussions. There have been plenty of opinions, plenty of individuals amongst the uh, cohort. It turns out that art is good for lots of things. It is good for impressionism and communication, for engaging with politics and social issues. It stimulates the brain. It feeds the soul. It is joy, energy and imagination. It's good for the artist and good for the viewer. Frankly, I don't think it is an overstatement to say that it is a bedrock of civilization. It is important. If you don't believe me, watch Simon <laughs> as a Simon Skarmas, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, opening program for BBC's Civilian Civilizations series and wonder at the immense history of human creativity. And do not weep at the stories of willful crass destruction of monuments and artifacts. As as he says it 
we can spend a lot of time debating what civilization is or isn't but when it when it opposes shows up in all its brutality and cruelty intolerance and lust for destruction we know civilization is stupid as destruction is it is a testament to the power and value of art and in this contradiction it is destructiveness he notes that humanity is also imprinted with the instinct, instinct to make things go beyond the demands of food and shelter, things that make us see the world and our place in it in a different light. So, I'm grateful to these artists and thank them for showing us the world and our place in its fresh light. It has been a joy and a privilege to travel with them on their journey through the course. Every year is, of course, special, but this year's group seems especially so. So many characters and so many interesting artists. We will miss them. I wish them all well and I will follow their careers as artists with interests. Then we have... Ash and Paul, which were the two technicians, they were both really lovely. They give you so much time if you're willing to put the time in. And he just puts, dear third years, it has been our pleasure to work with you for the last three years, getting to know you and being the part of your special journey from student to artist. We wish you all the best for your future endeavours. Love, Paul and Ash. And then we start with Tanya. Tanya was a very outgoing artist she was very lovely she was actually in our little room set should we call it i think with a uh, five other people and she was actually in the the artist studio next to me we uh, used to always chat when we came in so i'll just read her out said human beings have always measured time by the movement of the earth and its position relative to other objects in the sky we measure our days by the cycle of the earth spinning in its axis and we measure out our years by the earth moving around the sun or the sun appearing to move around the earth i have always been fascinated by the by the nature of the universe and the evolution of life on earth the idea that all carbon the elements that life depends on was created in the heart of a dying stars heart of dying stars and is both exciting and humbling. Life itself is translucent. It blossoms and grows and then ultimately it weakens and dies away and is returned to the universe to be remade in some other form. The psychological psych, cycle? I'm just gonna say the cycle. The cycle of nature of existence of death rebirth plays an important role in informing my work and does does archaeology and the story of the collective history really lovely piece so that piece there is concrete silver leaf and plaster karen was a, another artist i'd like to speak to because she was very straightforward but very calm and she just loved she kind of just got what a lot of other people were trying to say and she was able to describe it in a term where it didn't have, nothing was over complicated basically it just was what it was she was a very lovely lady as well so my paintings are informed by a playful spontaneous and intuitive process searching for a balance and harmony i explore this through using a broad range of materials whilst being interested in texture surface and color i playfully construct space for my paintings to transform through the vehicle of installation and assemb assemblage my work does not reference recognisable form. By applying abstraction, the results are dis deconstructed, but to the extent that meaning is shifted and possible inter interpretation sorry, becomes multi-faced, multiple-faced. The lack of clear references are clear elements to the work. Uh, Rachel, she was very, very good art history she used to get like first in every single one and i was there with my like c or d grade she was a lovely character as well she was very good at talking to you down to earth as well so my practice investigates the idea of the missing in terms of human experience in particular personal loss opportunities gone and potential not re realized Ex exploring both the conceptual possibilities of voids and the visual manifestations of time and history i attempt to make the missing visible by putting something back that has been taken away i travel to locations which have been some aspect of them stolen i i can't pronounce that word uh, i document my research and use this to suggest missing narratives i'm concerned with the relationship between object and space 
I investigate the idea of a void being something to look through to another place, but equally as an object it's in itself. Using mon monoliths to represent what is missing, I attempt to create the perception of stepping through a, space, a separate space, where what is missing exists in its own form. I'm also interested in how much media and method can communicate my ideas. I try to give my work a sense of direct touch and the intimacy that suggests is, is important to me. Using pastel paint and print, I create grounds that I work over and add to subduce palette echo in the theme of reduced experience. So the churchyard still got on her Instagram. <laughs> so she did we explained displayed it all. She was in the room with me. Her and another person was in our room. So Sophie Churchyard. My work is informed from memories of colour and ritual from extensive travel, work and meditation in India and Indonesia. Intending to exchange limitations for expansion, artworks are a platform to share with you my journey with light, colour and consciousness. The in intention that there are some emotional key allowing an audience to tune in to colour sounds or kind of a Anesthesia I experienced through creating these works, a resting place where mind becomes subservient for a time to the ribbons and emotions of pure colour. Emotions and sensations absorbed, integrated and expanded through consciousness outwards in a mes mesmeric film and vibrant painting, the outcome of a life lived spiritually. Jade. I think she became a teacher, you know. I have been working closely with the idea of reconnecting the mind and the imagination by using shapes, designed techniques and uncomplicated shapes to create imaginary sceneries. I work with colour, light, sound in hopes to spark people's imaginations. Each person's imagination is different. This is what intrigues me. As we age, our mind matures but our imagination doesn't. Nice little quote there. Ah, Amelia Hall. She was the other artist in our little room set. The room, she was a very feminist woman. She was great to have a conversation with, though, about um, human rights and veganism. So, this is her statement. Through a feminist perspective, I explore the reputation between myself and abstraction, discussing female form, bodily fluids and women in society. The work celebrates both physical and internal sides of women, contrasting the outward appearance of women and biological states. My most recent work investigates the controversy of menstruation, questioning how and why society and culture portrays periods as unclean and unsanitary. Within these projects, I use my own mental blood to create a raw one of prints which collectively builds towards the obstruction service the series called menstruation Con canvas this was done through a whole two years these works study stains of persistence to go and permanently it then has on a space as you place it all together it creates one instant per per permanence and takes ownership of the area it questions whether the work is less or more with influx of menstruational blood, particularly in the sense of honey, you've got a stain. A study which comments on the idea of sterile surfaces being infected with bodily fluids. fluids. And it's hampered, a lovely little girl, little girl, <laughs> a lovely woman to talk to as well. She was always dead happy every time I saw her. Either that or down the pub. <laughs> a recent encounter with the American abstract abstract expressionism era has left me deciding my practice holomy dedicate my practice to exploring and experimenting the medium of paint i began to express my conceptual ideas through emotion of gestural brushstrokes and mark making whilst using vast amounts of water to loosen the op opacity of paint to create layered paintings revealing emotional and and history. The use of water gives me free and impulsive behaviour to the paint, allowing me to have less control as to the outcome of the piece. While I seek inspiration for the past artists who broke boundaries and created surreal art, it allows me to re-engage and excite my own uh, my own studio practice. Very beautiful.
never really spoke to Kathy. She was a very interesting woman though. Um, but a lot of artists tend to go big. Her artworks were very focused and small. So her statement is, I'm a mystery storyteller who works well with the miniature because it allows me to remove myself from here and now. And as a child, I was born daydream a born daydreamer with an overactive imagination inspired by the environment of my childhood in Ireland. Confusing happenings that have no ending, inclu inclusion or resolution, just a glimpse without permission to question. Enter or break the awkward silence. My work as an artist is not about the creation of miniature, but the art of storytelling through miniature. I use miniature as a vehicle to communicate my stories. Using miniature allows me to control my ideas within a manageable size. I need it small in scale to enable me to lose myself within my work. I can appreciate and enjoy the complexity of the artwork when it is in small scale. I pers purposely do not include people in my work as I see everything that distracts, distracts me. As a distraction from my narrative. Rather, I offer a suggestion, present, presence and sense of an unfinished story, almost a stage set for the viewers to conclude their own story. How will the viewer conclude the scene and invite them to take a closer look? Serena. I still follow her on Instagram. She does these really... She, well, I, all I can say is that she travels a lot and it's pretty cool where she goes. <laughs> My artwork explores where the sea meets land through a series of mark making and print making. Drawing forms a significant part of my practice, also which feeds into my print making, print making process. My focus on seascapes is rooted in a fascination of rugged coastlines of Cornwall and Devon. I am also drawn to the permanence of rock formations set against the fluidity of the surrounding waters. The drawing process analyses and dissects the visual aspects in these natural forms slash landscapes which I subconsciously in interpret in abstract re-representations thus representing focuses more on la marks lines shapes and space within the image rather than the actual scene itself my drawing technique is central to my work I use small nervous tentative lines which float on top of the page to build up abstract landscapes. I predominantly focus on monotone pieces but I'm starting to explore subtle hues to represent my chosen landscape within my prints. We have Molly. I think I only sp spoke to her once or twice but she always did these really lovely live drawing live drawings. Oh this is in the third perspective. Molly Haynes is a current, currently a fine arts undergraduate studying at the University of Gloucestershire. Her work focuses on the female body and explores the physical and psych physical and aspects of fem femininity. In her practice she experiments with ways she can accentuate the beauty and abstract elements found within the human form, the f female form, sorry. Inspired by nature, her recent works evolve into a collaboration of botanical forms and the female body, representing the beauty of Mother Nature and Woman, the creator of life. June, she was a Canadian. I remember her, she was a very lovely lady. She very, can hold a conversation, definitely. <laughs> I am interested in patterns as a means of communication, especially her historical patterns using adornment places of worship. These were stylized versions of nature meant to be encouraged a spiritual connection to the nature world and humans place within it. A reminder that we are part of the essential whole. Using watered ink on paper I represent, represent the residue of those moments fading amongst into visibility, a ghost image, a trace. Commonplace materials contrast with a sense of timelessness. Quality of marks is like a dissolving fragment of the original source. The paper becomes more of an object due to the ripping caused by the watery ink, straddling the line between the pale, barely there application of ink and the corporal in the undulating paper. Contemplated moment is possible if I can read properly. <laughs> See, also known as Fiona, a very eccentric woman. <laughs> Again, could hold a conversation, and I remember the amount of time she'd come in and say what skip she's been in to take everything, basically. 
I work with found and recycled materials as much as possible, interested in lessening environment impact and feeling concerned by the effects of society's overconsumption. Saturated neon and related colours are favourites and recently I've been exploring projects, colour images and light, UV especially, which gives neon as extra kick. Translucent materials found plastic and fibres which allow colour layered build up but provide a contrasting textures and take colour lights in a different ways are all absorbing for me. Project produces projection produces colour and transparency as well as advantages of infinite scale up potential and new materials use, therefore providing mass colour while saving on consumption and waste. Exploration of relationships between fabric, light, sculptural forms result in all com encompassing 3D collage multimedia installations which I capture on my iPhone. These images create the film for projection, projection over the next installation and I recycle the materials from the last, adding, altering or remaking elements. How many possible remakes using the same materials are possible before the zealous dolls and how many colour layers generates of images can be added to projection films before colours become muddy or too, or too dis Lately I've be been so casting and investigating the potential of translating my images to digital... I don't know about that word. <laughs> Jacqueline? Hmm. Interesting. Izzy. Malaysia went to go study at the University of Bath for her masters. Again, a very lovely woman to talk to and very hard worker as well she was always in doing as much as she could possibly could my work sets out to make visible the frame through which we increasingly view visual Im information to challenge these boundaries both physical and virtual i employ artificial light to temporarily eliminate and transform man-made spaces and sculptures structures sorry depicting as well as recording light layers and reflections the material and immaterial resultantly converge. I collage my own imagery, bringing together, for example, the technique of embroidery and the contemporary imagery, which is influenced by observations of man-made structures and spaces recorded in my photographs. Currently, I have an interest in presenting the stages that go into an edited image, retaining and manipulating visual information, as well as referring older work I am to make the viewer question what they see. This thread of interest is tied to the increasing amounts of misinformation and fake news presented to us in everyday life. Oh, I remember Jo, she unfortunately broke her ankle in the second year and she was out for um, a very long time but she did very very well and also another lovely lady. My practice focuses on distilling the image and emotions of a visual mo movement. Layers and time are important to my work. The subjects of my exploration are found unexpectedly, while sitting on the bus or waiting in the queue. These are mov moments of rare idleness, filled with only the drone of traffic, the warmth of the sun, of the blackness of the winter chill. This is an illustration by the most recent body of work inspired by my journey on the number 10 bus. Shana. Exploring the themes, forms and elements within nature, I am to make works that give a sense of pattern and playfulness, using the process of brickmaking as the main way of getting these ideas across in my practice. The natural elements come through within the work I produce. That's short and snappy. She's a very good artist, especially because she actually helped with this putting together of the booklet. Very good management skills and a very lovely person to talk to as well. Next we have Amy. She was always doing something textured and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> Amy Bess artwork are concerned with the notions of process and extensive experimentation whilst observing and testing the limits of materials. Recently the exper experience that the work provokes for the viewer and how it interacts with the space is and has also begun to be more prominent concern for the artist. The work's main focus in the material and how it reuses and furs the viewer's senses. Amy Beth uses specific and often prognatic memories of landscapes formations as a stimulus for an automatic response and co corporal style of producing 
Moreover, the artist has, has tended to unite artworks in one colour, as it is believed that the artwork can be more quietly observed without further questions and distractions. The colours can provoke. Amy Beth aims to induce a feeling of tranquility within the space and for the viewer. She actually lent me um, the expanding foam for my last <laughs> sculpture, which I did end up giving back to her, as in like a new version of it. Broken. Never really spoke to her, but she seemed like a lovely woman. My recent work is all about connecting with history through my family's past. The idea of the portrait was, form was formed when I discovered an old photograph of her great-grandma whom I never had the chance to meet. In the photograph taken during World War II, my great-grandmother is wearing the uniform of the woman of the Royal Naval Services. My aim was to connect her with through my work. I was moved to learn over a wartime service and wanted to convey her beauty and dignity in my paintings as an expression of my pride in her. Julia Miller. Very much a chatterbox, box, and I'm pretty sure she would not mind me saying that because she was she was actually a scouser. I think she was from um, Prescott. Very again, everyone on my on our exhibition was such lovely people. So if I keep repeating it, it's because they they were such a lovely person. <laughs> How can one express an emotion through paint? It is even possible. My work emerges through the body and the life experience. It is a manifestation of both my present state and past memories. I'm enduring to express what is inside me and therefore thereby giving my emotions a vers versatile physical presence. Using colour and texture and spontaneous gestural marks, I am to convey feelings and that the viewer can identify with, provoking both an intellectual and emotional response. I rely completely on an instinctive, expressive approach, allowing each patient to develop my own life. I hope your meaning will become clear through my response to random marks I make. I'm not painting a physical representation of the subject, but rather that which is contained within. There is a dictography, I think that's how you pronounce it, in my work. Sometimes the paintings seem to refer to organic matter, bloody pulpy masses filling the space. At other times it takes the form of a series of marks, sometimes violent and edgy, and other times a series violent marks and edgy at other times meditative and multi-layered the direction of my paintings only develops and become known to me once they begin connor one of the two males in our group within my current art practice i focus on combining abstract marks mark making and my inspirations from science fiction and physics, mystery and wonder have been the project title for my current studio work. I choose this theme as I believe my influences and inspirations originate from the series of wonder within the realms of science. Connecting these interests within my abstract futurism drawings techniques, I am able to produce art which leaves an audience questioning what they have experienced and hopefully allowing them to open their imagination to contemplate the mysteries of outer space and how small a part we play within the universe. I largely represent my art through monotone drawings used in charcoal, pencil and graphite. I focus on scale perspective which allows for each drawing to be unique and adaptive to specific narratives. I've hidden within my sketches representing my art work coll coll collides with the importance of my mark making process. Using challenging methods creates a more exhilarating experience for me, such as producing live drawings, creating creating installations, and combining my photography skills. Photography? Photograph skills. Using mediums such as charcoal allows me to smudge and blend my mark making, creating futuristic shapes and capture a strong sense of movement and distortion. Chantel, she was obsessed with resin and for such a good reason. Also a Canadian and she was very, very chatty. I suggest following her on Instagram actually because she has a... She's been building her own house basically. <laughs> or doing up her own house, it's one or the other. But she's a very lovely, lovely lady. My current practice decontextualizes and re-examines objects, specifically the, out the inner space and the outer castings of mass produce electronic components. The work examines how the meaning is altered when the original function of an object is suspended. The result in becoming an essay on the interiors. 
exteriors and packaging of objects. I use plaster and clay to cast the interiors of these objects and create resin cubes that mimic the exterior cases. This process establishes more substantial inquiry into the relationship between the interiors and exteriors of everyday objects by the dislocation of function, context and material. In correlation with this development, I begin an examination into the byproducts associated with, associated with the mass production of electronics. The byproduct packaging is transformed by a casting and copyright process. The work exists as a sculptural installation that includes individual complementary light boxes. Hannah Roberts. The purpose of my practice is to articulate my own ideas and beliefs into visual form, to explore the human condition through the factual profile with paints, using paint to produce new challenging imagery and communicate to my viewer a great diversity of emotion and thought. I create visual visual imagery to diversify of diversity of emotion and thought. I create visual imagery to open the window to the soul, force pain out and expose its rawness to the attempt to heal damage. Employing the use of self-destruction in pursuit of perfection. Many works created are often destroyed or undermined in order to reach their resolved forms. We have Georgia. Georgina. Another traveller as well. The relationship between human and nature is an integral one of forming my work. The desire to capture my environment at a certain point in time and how we may respond within the setting psychologically. There's a constant dialogue between myself and the nature environment through investigation and observation. Working from first hand experience, I'm able to connect with the space and collect materials which we will form, begin and state within the studio, interpreting and dissecting that experience continues a long time after the original event. The context is altering by the space. With the drawing approach to the painting, I am able to communicate a variety of marks, translating time through addition and subtraction, beginning to work on a larger scale and with the arrangement of paintings themselves, forming a triptych or triptych. Each physical diversion acts as an interruption in the space. How may be inter interpreted? has been an interest within my process of making and when reflecting on my past experience of the landscape. There were some very big canvases so I had to get handmade. <laughs> and then we have me! Yay! <laughs> so, Laura Skull. She was okay, I suppose. Focusing on individual decisive mark making, I consider creating contrasting geological composition and surface area within my form whilst it is representing an immovable structure that compresses a neutral but complex space. The artwork is constructed through a particularly controlled process where unintentional and accidental actions of erosion or application contribute to the state of the artwork. The lack of control is used to intentionally irritate and engage with the human senses to cause the viewer to become uncomfortable and approach aware with caution. And there she is. Got Lucy. A very lovely lady as well. I think she's done quite well for that. I think she went into interior design after this. She's got a long paragraph as well <laughs> compared to my little short thing. Through my experiences with outdoor environments, I embody feelings compressing interest within organic exteriors, which are transferred into artworks. My interest within coastal regions Specifically, rock formation creates a sense of walking on certain parts of the earth that appears untouched. This allows for a sense of being on this planet. It raises questions about the purity of the land, as history is evident within the environment guiding it, the initial perspective of the place. Therefore, connection can be made between history and personal feelings at the moment to understand the experience. I use photography to capture memories. This demonstrates how my perspective of exterior environments leads to perception, perception sorry, by using clear perspectives over video of coastal, coastal environments. Changing the traditional and characteristics of the video my ongoing work uses photography with laser cuttings and screen printing onto and into perspective captures refragment refracted, refracted 
and reflected of the light and shadows on the wall. This brings photographic and embodied memory back, learning the conclusion to the audience. Through standing in coastal bays, surrounded by rocks that are 60 million years old, makes us feel completely at peace with myself and my surroundings. The environment is ever-changing due to the daily tides, allowing history to become part of it. The tidal sequences of the sea dem demonstrates how water and rock can coexist for millions of years without human impact. Being within this environment makes me feel detached from reality and is able to capture my creative thoughts, creating a sense of calm and being able to create art work. And we have Liam, who is the other male within our group. Through my practice, I attempt to create artworks which challenge the outlook people have on our world and environment by working the shapes and lines to create abstraction abstract visuals. It questions its naturalistic creation of our world and what we are as humans have made it become. I often work to f on found materials bringing my street art and graffiti influence into a more cons contemporary environment without the presence of a bordered canvas. I physically and theologically push the boundaries of the limitation and imprisoning edges that come with the contemporary art canvas. What? I'm a multidisciplinary artist with a particular interest in movement, dance and the marks it leaves behind, both mentally and physically. My work is not limited by any medium as I blend, as I blend sculpture, painting and film together to create my artwork. Although my subject of interest may evolve, I have changed other change, travel and study. My method of creating pieces have always remained green. I reuse, recycle and repurpose found objects in my neighbourhood to create environmentally conscious artwork. Emily. I always like these. It was always aesthetically pleasing to look at. Rooted in the creation by itself as society and the universe, my practice explores the interconnectedness of all things. Taking elements from both religion and science, my works is an attempt to understand my own individual position in the world. Every colour shape process I use has a symbotic, symbotic yeah, purpose, contrasting the use of free and the oppressive circles and squares. Blues and reds, hands, paint brushes, I create works that toy between the spiritual and the physical. All my works are created by using the body as a drawing tool. The body is a sen sensory boundary between two separate individuals, as well as the inside and outside of oneself. Our bodies allow us to interact with the material to record and create, but they also allow us to see ourselves, to validate our own individual existence. We outstretch our hands to look down our feet and see that we are in the world. We see our own time, our own aging process. My work reflects my own and fundamentally human needs to connect something real. And finally, Jo and Wood. She did some massive paintings as well, and she was a very lovely lady because I spoke to her every day. <laughs> Hi, Joe, if you're watching. Through the exploration of rural landscapes, I have become increasingly interested in deterioration of the natural world and how this can be result in a apocalyptic style scene. Wanting to create art that highlights and considers this, I use a range of paints, paint materials, and colour palettes to produce dramatic, atmospheric paintings that begin to introduce spaces that have become desolate over time. I work in large canvas scale in order to confront the view with a dark and imposing scene wanting the atmosphere to completely end like them. And there we have it. Let's go back to this page. I'll just go back to Brogan because it seems to be the right page to sit on. <laughs> well guys, I hope that was not too much talking and I hope you did enjoy it. If you have any questions about the book or anything I've mentioned or you'd like me to just go through another book like this, I do have one from college I believe. Um, please leave in the comment section below if you like also please subscribe to my channel and also like this video in my description box There is links to my social medias my eBay selling account Which is where you find all my artworks I feature on my channel and also there is a PayPal donation page if you'd like to make a donation because that would really help me out but In the meantime, I've talked enough and I'll leave you alone, but I will see you later. Bye